Hey everyone, Andrew Stormer here and welcome back to From the Depths. I've been asked how my ships go so fast. The answer is steam engines. Now, why you wouldn't want to use a steam engine is because it is a material hog. They suck material like crazy, they're not efficient at all. That's why you might go with some other form of propulsion, maybe just a normal fuel engine. You might care about that in a campaign, but if you don't care about that and you just want your ships to go fast, you just want a really good ship, you don't care about how it performs in campaign, then steam engines are what you want. Here are my three test ships of the different size of steam engines. Just a variation you could do. You can do however many amount of pistons you want, however many boilers you want, but these are gonna be my examples to go through and teach you the principles of how to build a good steam engine and not having just tons of material wasted or having it uh, not be super fast. Starting off steam engines, what you need is you need a gearbox, you need crankshafts, and then you need your engine mounts. And those go to a reduction gear that go to propeller shafts that go to your propeller. That's the super basics of that part. And then there's the boiler part, which you also need, which is your steam piping connected to your boiler and those go straight into your pistons. There's these things that are axis shifting gears and these, they can shift the axis that your engine is on. So if you have a propeller that's on a different level than your engine, you can put some axis shifting gears in. These have to connect to the engine shafts. They can't be connected to the propeller shafts. They won't work that way. The pistons, they just have to be connected to the crank somehow. They just have to be aligned right. And you can do four, like one on each side of the crankshaft. This is a flat four, so there's two on each side and they're opposing each other. You could do just an inline. You could do just straight up and down or have it straight sideways only on one side it doesn't matter if you look at this there's so many numbers and everything going on here but you'll understand it by the end of this video the first thing you'll see is it says it creates over 3,000 horsepower steam engines just make a crap ton of horsepower and you really don't need that much but with that excess horsepower you can power I don't know a jet engine you can power the scrambler things for your AI system to not be detected by other ships as easily those can take up to 10,000 horsepower. Now you couldn't get that out of this engine, but like that engine over there, you could easily throw 10,000 horsepower at it and it wouldn't affect your uh, speed whatsoever. The next thing you'll see is the maximum RPM that it should go. If it goes over, it just breaks. And that's why you don't want a ton of boilers because if you have just a ton of boilers and you're making tons and tons of steam, your engine over revs and then it breaks and then it has to get repaired and then it has to start all over from zero which if you didn't know steam engines they have to work their way up they have to start from zero and slowly make their way up to the rpm that your boilers are set at. in between those two black boxes there's this one line that shows you your rpm this one is stabilizing at 57 rpm then the big black box below the rpm the third line in that box says due to the number of reduction gears which is two the propellers can go to zero to max rotation speed in three seconds what that means is if the ship is stopped and then you go a hundred percent speed in three seconds it will be up to its max speed the line under that is the most important of the lines that you need to pay attention to right now because it determines how many boilers and what rpm you want your engine to be at due to the number of reduction gears the propeller needs the engine shaft to rotate at least 60 rpm to go max speed. What I found with the small engines is that 60 RPM is a reasonable number, and you get that with two reduction gears. With one reduction gear, it's crazy. It's like 120 or even higher than that, and that takes so many more boilers to get that engine up to speed. And then also it takes a lot longer to go from zero to max speed if you floor it. And with more boilers, it takes more material to make them. It takes more space 
and it burns more material. Now that you got that down, you have to be able to create a boiler that makes that engine that you have built when it is all up to steam, hot, good pun, it has to be doing a little bit more than the 60 RPM in this engine's case. This engine actually needs to be going a little bit more. So what you do here is first you just make some boilers and you set the burn rate to max. And then you just wait a while, see where the RPMs tops out at. And then you see, is it too low? Is it not enough? So in this case, I guess you kind of need another one. And then we're going to just slap a boiler control there, put it up to steam, put way more up, and then it has to get going again. After it is just slightly above that number, which in this case is 60, then what you want to do is full throttle it. And when it's full throttle, look back at what your RPM is because it takes away a little bit of RPM when you're actually moving. So you want it to be, in this case, 60 while it's moving, not while it's idle. Then after that, you wanna go back to your boiler control, go back to your burn rate, and then just barely decrease it by tiny increments, and then wait for the steam engine to go to its new max speed, and then see if it still has enough RPM. Once it's just about, just barely over that RPM that you need for max speed, then you are at max efficiency. Why you wanna decrease the burn rate if you have a lot more RPM than you need is because it cuts down on the fuel consumption. So this one, now it says it's 1.62 material per second, but if we up it back to full, it does 1.76 material second. So fine tuning that can save you a lot of material in the future. The other thing with the boilers is you don't have to do just one boiler. You can do multiple boilers. Why you would want multiple boilers is because the smaller the boiler, the faster it heats up, which means the faster the steam pressure gets built up, which means the faster the engine gets to max RPM. You might not always need that though. Like in this case, it's like 10 boilers, 11 tiny boilers. You saw how fast that engine got up to speed. But that's also because this is a small steam engine and also it's a four cylinder. It's not an eight cylinder, it's not a 16 cylinder, it's not some crazy number of cylinders that you would need a lot more uh, boilers for. I made a V8 version of this ship too. And if you look at this one, there's actually two boilers that are eight long instead of one boiler that's 10, now 11 long. The more pistons you have, the more steam you need, which means the more boilers you need. And I found that one boiler that was 16 long was super slow at getting up to speed. So I split it into two and then it gets up to speed a lot quicker. Like, look at that. It's already at 64 RPM and I just spawned it in like 30 seconds ago. So basically with a steam engine, you set the amount of cylinders that you want, and then you set how many reduction gears you want. And then after that, it's all in the boilers and it fine tuning that. If you want more reduction gears to go from zero to max a lot faster, you can do that. If you just want one, I don't recommend it. You can do that. It's just gonna be a lot slower and you might not reach top speed because you might not reach max RPM. I'm gonna get to those engines in just a second, but I wanna say that there is also turbines. So just like the fuel engines that you can make electricity from their power, the steam engines, you can put a generator wheel thing on it and that makes electricity, or you can make turbine things. They look like boilers just with a little bit different texture and those make electricity. I'm not gonna get into that because that's how to make electricity and I'm trying to show you how to make a fast ship. Couple other tiny things is that you can see in the pipes how much pressure is in the pipes. In this engine's case, the steam pressure is 320 and that's what it goes up to with the max RPM. So now with the pressure release valve, we wanna set that to I'd set it at probably 500 or something. The engine can go up to 252. So if the pressure goes up by 100, 
it's going to go up by like, I don't know, 30 RPM or something. It's not going to break the engine. So a little bit extra steam is okay if it just happens to happen. But you want the pressure release valve set to some reasonable number. So if a boiler gets destroyed or something happens in battle, it's not going to send tons and tons of steam pressure at your engine and just be like 250, 500 RPM and then pff, it all explodes. In the steam engine stuff, in the builds, if you go to the gearbox, it has the propellers and the small ones only get a one meter propeller. But the large ones, they have a three meter and a five meter. So a five meter actually would let you go faster because it's bigger, it has more force. Like this one, it says the max force is at 54,000 when the three meter is 24,000. So if your ship can take the bigger propeller, do it because you'll go faster. Here's the generator and the wheel, like I was talking about to make the electricity. Also, there's a difference between the crank and the cased crank, and same with the engine shaft and the engine shaft bearing. The cased and the bearing ones, they have a lot more health. So it's kind of like an armored version of it. The other thing I wanted to point out was there's a two meter propeller shaft. Now I hate building with these, but they're really useful in one place on the ship. And that is where the propeller exits the hull. So right here, what I would do is I would place, I'd destroy both of those and I'd put a two meter there, which that connects it. So then, I can place a block right there. The one meters, you can't place blocks through, but the two meters, the block can go in the second part. That's how you have the propeller go out of the hole and still have a sealed hole. Other interesting thing is boilers and engines, they are cross compatible. So you could put a giant boiler with a medium engine. You could put a tiny boiler with a large engine. It doesn't matter. All the boilers, they work the same. It's just recommended that you use a small one with the small pistons and the large boilers with the large pistons and the huge boilers with the huge pistons. It's a lot cheaper to go with the smaller one or cheaper to go with the one that matches. For example, I had a huge boiler hooked up to a large engine and when I switched out the boiler to a just a large boiler it reduced the price of the ship by like a thousand or two. I'd recommend using the equal ones. A circumstance though that you might want to use a bigger boiler is you might want to use a bigger boiler on a small steam engine with like 16 pistons or even more pistons, which I don't know why you'd need that many, but that might be a time to use it. To finish this off, the large engines, I found that also two reduction gears was reasonable. And two reduction gears on a large engine needs at least 70 RPM. And this one, I don't know, it ran out of material. So, you know, we can't exactly test it. And four boilers, with uh, 0.95, it might be a little bit more, I can't tell you for sure, because it's at zero, it ran out of material. And for the huge steam engine, I found that three reduction gears was actually better than two. It was more reasonable because this gets it down to 133 RPM, which is a lot more doable than like, I don't know, 170. Like you can see how many boilers are here. I think that's two nine long boilers and it's only four pistons. I don't know how big you would have to do the boilers or how many boilers you would need for eight pistons or 16 pistons or however many you do. These take a while to get going, even split up over the two different boilers. So it takes like a good, I don't know, it might even be five minutes to get it up to 133 RPM. So what size engine should you put in your ship? Well, first it depends on how big your ship is. Your ship might be small enough that it couldn't even fit one of these huge engines in it. Besides for it fitting, it depends on how fast you want it and then also how fast does it need to go. And and how much material do you want to burn? And even if it can fit the engine, can it fit all the containers that it needs? Because this one, the two containers, it ran out in the time of recording this. Also, a small ship might not be as stable at a high speed as a giant ship, maybe. But if you are solely looking for speed, 
the huge ones are the fastest. These ones I've seen, they can probably get up to 50 meters a second. It's really fast. The large ones, they can get you maybe 30, maybe 35, who knows? And the small ones, probably 25 or 30, something. That's my guesses. It all depends on how many pistons you have and how many reduction gears, how efficient the entire thing is. But if we take this eight cylinder small one out, now this ship isn't optimized whatsoever for a top speed run, but you can see we are hitting 21 meters a second, 23 meters a second there. So it all depends. 100% depends on how big the steam engine is and how optimal your ship is and how much drag it has. Like if your ship has a ton of drag, that huge steam engine that might go 50 meters a second with a ship with hardly any drag might only do 30 meters a second, 35 meters a second with your ship. So that's why you'd want a super optimal ship. The large engine that I have here, it's top speed. We can't even see it because it's just gonna fly to space. So, you know, it, you saw it hit like 40, 50 meters a second, but that's because it was flying to space and had no drag. Before it started flying away, it was doing, I don't know, 30 meters a second, something like that. So, you know, you might be able to hit 40 meters a second if you had a ship that worked. This is just a test ship. It's just a platform for the steam engine. And if you wanna see what a giant steam engine can do, Go watch my last episode. The giant steam engines are super fast. That's gonna do it for this one. So if you liked it, share it with a friend. And if you want to see more like this, hit subscribe. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time.